Has Trevor Lawrence's first three years gone the way you thought? If not, that still doesn't have anything to do with why you would or would not extend him. I'll tell you why I feel that way here on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank y'all for joining me here on Locked On Jaguars. I'm the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, where it's your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen. By the way, I am Tony Wiggins. Little news, we can go over to YouTube and you can subscribe for free. That's right, at Locked On Jaguars. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and also hit the bell so you get notifications each and every time we drop an episode. And make sure wherever you get your audio podcast in your car at your desk at work with your ear pods on all of that stuff man make sure you tap in the locked on jaguars every single day shout out to the everydayers also for joining us every day here on locked on jaguars today's show is brought to you by monopoly go game off we got to talk more about monopoly go the fast-paced game lets you team up with friends for tournaments to unlock awesome prizes like unique stickers for trading, cool playing pieces, and hilarious emojis for taunting your friends. So download Monopoly Go now, free on Google Play or the App Store. Dot game on. All right. Here's what we're going to talk about today. Trevor Lawrence. Lots of discussions I had the last week about whether or not Trevor Lawrence is going to get an extension. Of course he is going to get an extension. But there's a lot of people that confuse being the next guy up or being the guy whose turn it is with being the best player in the league because you're likely going to reset the market or come close to it, be a top five paid quarterback. Doesn't mean that you're actually a top five player in the league. And we're not going to change the rules just for Trevor Lawrence. But why do people not feel the way a lot of local folks feel about Trevor Lawrence? Who's to blame for that uncertainty? We'll get to that in segment three. Why I get and understand the skeptics. And it has really nothing to do with the way he's played. Not as much, but it has a lot to do with a lot of those expectations that we talked about. The adjectives that were placed on people. The word generational was thrown around a lot. And there's just some folks who live life ready to debunk things. And we'll talk about that in segment two. But first, why I would extend Trevor Lawrence. Because you got to this point where you where you damn near have to. Well, you could wait. They exercise the fifth year option, so they that means that he's here for five years at least. He's only done three. I make it sound like a prison sentence, don't I? When I say that, and like, yeah, yeah, he he got he got three to five, but he might get out early or something like nah, that. That I, I don't want y'all to think that I'm making being in Jacksonville sound like you know, dude went up the road did some time. That's not what 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 my intention is. But what it is is is. While there's no rush, I do think that there has to be a deliberate and intentional effort or appearance that he's your guy. It's the psychological part of the game, man. You got to let your team know who who they're going into battle with and that you believe in them. They can't follow this dude out there every single day, but y'all acting like y'all don't want him. It's counterintuitive. And then why would they act like they don't want Trevor Lawrence? Trevor Lawrence has not been bad. Trevor Lawrence has been a decent quarterback since he's been in the league. Above decent. But see, there's some people that are pointing exactly what I just said as a gotcha moment and saying, see, Wig, that's not the way that you describe somebody that you're willing to make one of the five highest paid players in the NFL, which will probably mean he's going to be one of the five, play- five highest paid players in NFL history because that number ain't going down. It's just constantly going up. Here's where I get you. Would you rather have Trevor Lawrence or Kirk Cousins? Because if you tell me Kirk Cousins, I'm going to call you a liar. And then if you tell me you rather have uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence, then I will just very quickly remind you of how much money Kirk Cousins has made and continues to make in the National Football League. It doesn't matter whether you like a house on the street. What's the median prices of what all of the houses are going for? And that's probably what that one's going to go for. That's just the way it goes. He doesn't have to be a top five player in the league. He doesn't have to be the best quarterback in the league. He just has to be a dude that it's his turn to get paid. And good enough to qualify for that. And he has been that. He has been that. 
We'll tell you why I get the skeptics. We'll get to that in segment two. I understand. I fully understand. And then in segment three, I want to tell you why we shouldn't even be here having this discussion. You extend it. You extend him for the simple fact that if he was a free agent, somebody else would give him the money. So that means that's where his value is determined. And I know those players, are, if Richard Sherman hit his, he's going to go crazy on me because Richard Sherman, he's going to be able to point out a tweet where I said Trevor was great and he told me he wasn't. And then I said, you crazy. And then three weeks later, I said, well, maybe we need to reevaluate Trevor. He said, I told you. But that's just the ebb and the flow and the up and down of what you go through as a as a person that's observing someone. And a lot of that, too, has a whole bunch to do with a whole bunch of words and adjectives that we used to describe Trevor Lawrence when he came out in the draft. And I said all of that stuff could be true if we do certain things. And when we get to the who's the blame part of it, I'm going to show you all the things in the first three years that the Jaguars didn't do that they should have. You should know what it is by now. But I do get the skeptics, and I understand. But this this situation is the most Jaguar situation of all time. Now, I know everybody's saying I'm going to be a heel turn right now because I've been praising Trent Bucky for the last week and a half. No, it's not, it's not going to be a heel turn. What it is is just a slap to reality. My wife posted something on social media yesterday. She said, I wish there was a day between Sunday and Monday. And why I found that so funny is because let's medical metaphorically make and i know we're right in the middle of a rap beef so i gotta met, metaphorically do something that to, to, to kind of put you in my neighborhood so you understand where i'm coming from that's what kung fu kenny does like drake tell you whatever he say is like you can understand it right country lamar makes you think like i think i heard what i just heard but let me reevaluate it after i get some rest and then nine times out of ten you ain't hear it right the first time so here's what i'm gonna tell you The Jaguars have done certain things that have been cool. But there's no day between Sunday and Monday. And what I mean by that metaphorically is this. Sunday, you resting because you enjoyed yourself Friday night and Saturday. Monday ain't no rest for the weary. You better get up and go to work because it's time to cook the donuts or whatever it is that you do. There is no bridge between those two days right so the jaguars have done a lot of good things but now it's monday it's time to go to work the reality is okay show's over let's see who we are and what we have and and why people feel what they feel and this is what now you're on the battlefield now you're on the battlefield and what i mean by that is Whatever you did that's good has to show itself now, it has to manifest itself now, all of that good deal. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today. And I'm telling you right now that the Jaguars, this is the most Jaguar situation ever. And why is because as a person covering a team every day, you kind of think that you, you know where you are right now as a franchise and that you feel good about Trevor because you're here every day, right? But when you take a bigger look at it, for some reason, the Jaguars are always in a situation where they got to make a decision before all the evidence is in. But they've had enough time to have, for all the evidence to, to be in. But because they spent a whole offseason, like last year, stepping on themselves, they robbed themselves of evaluation and they robbed themselves of a chance to really, really let everybody know exactly what you feel about Trevor here locally is what people should feel about it nationally. This is all on them because they should have taken another step and been back into the playoffs with maybe two more wins than they won the previous year. This should have been an 11 and six football team, but because they sat and sat and sat and didn't wait. This is what I mean by there's no there's no difference between there's no extra day between Sunday and Monday. Sunday, yeah, we were enjoying what happened with the draft. That's what we consider that Friday and Saturday. But now the reality is here. It's business. It's back to business. And we got to get back on the train and sign people. And then we're going to have these conversations and try to justify why Trevor Lawrence will be paid as a top five quarterback when he's not one. And you're going to have all the people come out and you're going to have to be able to explain this this way. This is the most Jaguar thing ever. And I keep I can't harp on it anymore. 
the fact that there's a, a, an issue that seems like obvious to us, but it's polarizing to a lot of other people. I actually had legitimate arguments last week with people saying Trevor doesn't deserve the money. And I tried to explain to them the, the whole, I wouldn't call it the political landscape, but the whole landscape of relativity as to why you do it. We shouldn't have to be having these weird conversations. You look and what you see is, yep, that's the guy you want to keep forever. Versus, that's the guy I don't know if I want to keep forever. I'm going to tell you what you're going to end up being. You're going to end up being the Dallas Cowboys with a dude making $59 million that you can't trade or cut. And you also can't help him because he's making so much money, you can't spend any money to get him help anywhere else. See, that's another, that's, that's another thing about having a situation where you need an extra day to figure it out, but you don't have it. And the Jaguars don't have an extra day to figure this out. The Jacksonville Jaguars will extend Trevor Lawrence. He deserves to be extended. Based on relativity, they should extend him. But these conversations are not going to go away because the second they do it, somebody's going to say the Jaguars just paid a dude top five money that ain't even a top 10 quarterback. And whether or not that's true or not, get ready for it because it's coming. So I'm going to tell you why I understand what they're saying, but I kind of think they need to slow their roll too if they really understand uh, the 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 way football works and the way these these salaries work and why Trevor is still worth that money. I'm going to tell you all that in just a second here on Locked On Jaguar. I got to tell you about FanDuel first, man. FanDuel is the absolute real deal. It's going to take all time in both the NBA and the NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big deal and a big win of your own. Now, what it means, especially in the NBA with low management, at least you know these guys can't rest. So now you know people will play even if they have to limp out there and play. So make sure you keep that in consideration and read up to the last minute who's in those lineups and who's not FanDuel to let you know all of that. That's 150 bucks right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Do this. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every plate off shot count i'll give it to you again fanduel.com slash locked on l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n and make every playoff shot count fanduel america's number one sports book segment number two here on locked on jaguars we're at your team every day we thank you for making us your first listen we're talking about trevor lawrence why i would extend trevor lawrence and I named a number of reasons why I do it, but I kind of tried to segue you and segue you into understanding on my third day theory. There's no shout out to my wife. There's no we need an extra day between Sunday and Monday. That means more time to adjust from one period to another, more time to make a, a more evaluated decision. That's the difference, though, between Trent Balky and me and all of us that do this for a living. That's Balky, the other 31 GMs, to their credit. They don't get the they don't get the benefit of the opportunity to be able to sit here and go, oh, I would have done this and done that, and then still be able to sit back like a Monday morning quarterback and either uh, give them credit or land base them if it works or doesn't work. Because that's pretty much what it is, and that's what we do, which is why we proactively go about here on Lock of the Jaguars, and we talk about these things beforehand. So everything that we say is on tape, and you can always refer back to it. And then when things do happen, hopefully you'll say, dang, man, we mentioned that as a possibility. This is what's going to happen. Trevor Lawrence is going to get his extension, one that I believe he deserves. And deserves has a very broad meaning, a very broad meaning. But the reason I'm going to lean in and, and say that I get the skeptics is because I do. But I'm also going to tell you why I can hear that uh, from people that believe that he shouldn't he shouldn't uh, be one of the five pay, highest paid quarterbacks in the league. And I keep hopping on top five because th th those deals are kind of the way that they're structured. It may look like you have to look at the total years. You have to look at the guaranteed money. Um, Patrick Mahomes deal is really weird in the way it's set up. And so is Joe Hurt. You don't know who's got the most cash. And so when I say top five, I mean relative to all of those things being combined. And uh, whether it's top five on paper, top five in cash, 
it'll it, it'll be a, an up to date deal where there's some deals that may look better on paper that really really won't be. So so really, that's what I mean by top five quarterback in the league. And, and I understand those people that will say, well, if he's not a top five quarterback. So the reason why I keep saying relativity and the reason why that's so important to this conversation is because Trevor Lawrence ain't going to be the first dude that gets paid like a top five player who isn't a top five player. So that's why it's very important in this conversation that people just realize it's his turn and this is what happens. And we're going to go on and on and do think pieces forever about something that is just a standard practice in the league. He's up next. He's up next. Go look at much, how much money Dak Prescott has made and tell me that he he he's actually earned, quote unquote, that money by winning like one playoff game. No, he didn't. Justin Herbert, too. None of them. But the thing with Trevor Lawrence that those two guys don't have the benefit of, and I, and I say benefit and I use that very loosely, is – the skeptics and why does why don't why didn't they have the skeptics? Because nobody expected them to 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 be the next coming of Dan Marino, and they expected that with Trevor, because of all the adjectives. Because ever since he was in high school, the kid lost like three games from age thirteen all the way until he was 21, 22 years old, or something like that. I mean, it, it, Trevor was to the point where anybody that questioned anything about his evaluation, they were called idiots. And you always have to be careful when you have a quote unquote can't miss prodigy like that. It, it, things just don't go that way. How many times do I say bad, bad organizations ruin good players more than bad players ruin good organizations? Good organizations don't allow bad players to ruin them. One, they usually don't get a whole bunch of them. But two, when they do, they get rid of them. The Jaguars culture is sort of like this moving thing. Like you can see it, but it's not stable. They're trying to stabilize it, and they continue to stabilize it, but they've sort of had this mercenary, they're plugging all of this stuff into their culture from a mercenary perspective, and really it just has to exist in the building. So when they came, when, when Trevor came in, culture was a moving target. We had just been two years away from Nick Foles, and now you got Urban Meyer, and you got all of this stuff moving all over the place. You got Urban standing over in the hood, talking to people out east. You got talking about being the best of the best saying stuff's got to stop and and trevor being dragged all in front of the microphone his first year all it was just stuff was all over the place and it went against and the reason why i'm bringing it up in hindsight is because it went against something that when the jaguars were secured to have the number one pick the first thing i said was they need to insulate him with a whole bunch of structure they need to just let him be a quarterback they need to forget about the fact that they want somebody to be the face of the franchise and want somebody to sell tickets and want and want and want this whole Duval persona to really come alive. And, and we had reporters saying that the team needed to run everything that they do through Trevor. And I'm sitting here begging the team, don't run everything through Trevor. Let Trevor be a young quarterback with his team and a kid and just grow up and work his butt off 16 hours a day. Don't be putting all that extra added pressure on this man, asking him to talk about grown man's issues and team issues. And he's just a rookie. They, they made so many mistakes. So that's why we're going to get into who's to blame for all of this uncertainty. There were a lot of displays of Trevor's maturity when everybody in the building looked to be real immature, right? When you do that, you start expecting people, people start expecting to see a grown man that's got it all together. Since you parading him out there as a grown man that's got it all together. And what happened was on the field, he didn't have it all together because he was still a young, young dude trying to learn. And then he had an offensive line that couldn't block for him. And he had receivers going in and out of here like a relay team every week because they thought they were going to try to find somebody fast. Then they hit lightning in the bottle the next year with Doug Peterson, and all of a sudden, boom, they go to the playoffs after having a horrendous first half of the season and a great second half. Then in the third year, flip flop. They had a good first. Well, they, not, they had a good first half of the season record wise and a bad second half. So they have really just been up and down. A terrible coach gets fired. Whole new staff comes in. Two years. One 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 magical end of a year and, and one uh, kamikaze and disaster of, of another year. And now we're still here. Now you're talking about a contract extension when really the franchise has been up and down all over the place.
And all we have to hold on to is the fact that, ooh, this show is an improvement from only winning three games and having the number one pick every single year. Man, we'll take this. No, we won't take this. And that's why we're here now, and that's why we got so many skeptics about Trevor Lawrence. And I'm going to tell you who's to blame and why the uncertainty exists. And more importantly, I'm going to try to find out through thought if this will ever be what everyone thought it was going to be when Trevor was picked. I'll go through that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguar. I know y'all got to get up on that Monopoly Gold, man. You got some heavy, heavy, heavy holidays coming up this year. And Monopoly Gold is going to have you and your family in stitches. It's game off. We got to pause here to talk more about Monopoly Gold. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that, Wig, but there's so much more stuff and good stuff in this game. At Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends or time tournaments, four time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock, and there's so much more to get. Cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with, hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go, which is a twist on the classic Monopoly game. So get off the bench and go download it now for free on Google Play or the App Store. It's game on, man. Monopoly Go feels exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges, and you can do too. Go download it now for free on Google Play or the App Store. All right, thank you for joining me here on Locked On Jaguars. We're at your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen. If you're watching Fox Sports or ESPN all day on your TV, you have to turn it down when the volume gets uh, too high with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The media, especially national media, don't usually need a reason to be wrong about something, right? Or to be loud about something or to be both loud and wrong, which is a really double whammy. And sometimes they uh, are actually justified. I think they've been a little bit unfair to Trevor Lawrence. Because most of the time when people try to judge Trevor Lawrence's game, they blame stuff uh, on him that isn't really his fault. But, and I say but with a capital B because here it comes. Generally, if you really have to overly explain something to people that should come natural to them, either they don't want to hear it or the thing you explain, it needs to be kind of self-explanatory and it's really something that you shouldn't be having to go all over and overboard about to try to make people believe it. So, so that the, the part of that, when you really sit here and think about it and, 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 and there are some people that believe Trevor shouldn't get a contract extension and think the Jaguars are crazy. There are people right here in Jacksonville that think that I'm, I'm telling you because these are conversations that I had last week and I was flabbergasted by it. Right. So uh, I'm sitting there thinking like, Wig, what they're trying to tell you is this. If it was so, that's a lot of money, right? Top five paid all time in NFL history, that's a lot of money. And if it was so obvious, why are you spending so much time explaining why he should get it? And you know what? They're exactly right. So maybe we ought to spend some time talking about why it's something that you have to talk about so much to make people understand. And one thing I really, really hate doing is trying to change people's minds with, with I, I don't think you have to do that. If something is a fact or something that you believe in sternly, like the way that I thought, uh, think about stuff, I'll put it out there and I'll explain it as good as I, but I shouldn't have to work on trying to change your mind in order to make you believe it. Because if you're a person that just wants to believe something, you're going to believe it anyway if you don't think he's ready. But if I do think he's ready, then it ought to be I ought to be able to just do this. And if you didn't look at me, if you're listening on audio, I just point it. And the way I'm pointing is I'm pointing at the evidence. There you go. There ought to be more reasons for me to be able to just tell people the way kids and kids are yapping at them and they just point at the scoreboard when there's a minute and 36 seconds left and you down 36, they just go look. 
And I ought to be able to do that when I'm talking about Trevor Lawrence more than I actually am. But why can't I? I'm glad you asked. Even though I still think he needs a contract extension and he should, that has absolutely nothing to do with a lot of the things that I've seen from him. And it has nothing to do. The one thing I have seen from Trevor Lawrence is he doesn't run from it. He wants that smoke. Even when he's hurt, he won't tell nobody. Now, while I get upset that he does that from time to time and I get upset that he kind of like runs a quarterback sneak without telling people he's about to do it and all of that stuff. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I don't question where the motivation for it comes from. And I can get behind a dude that ain't scared all day. I can get behind a guy that that's about that. That's about that action. And I know he ain't scared because guess what? He's been going out there with a hole in his wall of a security force for the last three years. And it's right up the middle. And he's been running for his life. Those are the people to blame. The people that sat in front of a microphone and told you we're not big and physical enough, but we're the ones that were responsible for building a team. I can think that Trent Baalke has done a great job in the last few months and still point out that fact. I can. And sometimes we got to stop thinking that we can't do that. Because when you can point out something that is right, but then point out something that was wrong too, then you can also point out something that's wrong when you're always pointing out something that's right. I would pay you. But I understand why people think we shouldn't. Those reasons ain't all his fault. Sometimes it's just something that you have to make a decision about. I get why people think that we shouldn't pay Trevor Lawrence, but I also get why you should. Because he is a top 12 quarterback in the league, at the very minimum, depending on who you're arguing with. Top 15 at worst, right? I think he's top eight, top nine. I may be a little biased because I'm watching it so closely. But I also know what it's like to have a bottom five quarterback in the league. And unfortunately, I'm going to sound like a bunch of people I criticize. Paying for something today just because you know what it's like to be like real hungry isn't a good reason to pay for something today. You got to actually make sure the thing that you're buying is real. The question is, I don't know if it's real or not, but I know what not being real and good enough feels like. And I'm willing to gamble and pay my money so we never go back there again. I can't say it any easier than that. I'm willing to gamble that the reason why I can't just point at the evidence and say that Trevor Lawrence is, is, is the man ain't got nothing to do with Trevor Lawrence. It's got something to do with some of the deficiencies that's been around Trevor Lawrence. And it's got something to do with an organization that for 25 years at best has been trying to figure out their foundation and their ground. And it's moving, but it's not moving as much. And Trevor Lawrence might be a quarterback that's good enough to say, hey, be still. I got it. The point is, is Jackson, Jacksonville is going to have to pay in before they actually know whether that's true or not. So guess what that's called? That's called getting paid to do your job. Y'all are supposed to know and understand this. I'm not supposed to. Fans aren't supposed to. So we're just saying do your job. And right now it's trending that they're going to do their job in a way that I am in favor of. I want to pay Trevor Lawrence. Because as I said on a pod a couple of weeks ago, I think if we're trying to figure out the answers, if we're trying to, there's something, that, you know, you can, you, can, you can water and fertilize what's right while trying to still diagnose what's wrong and what's holding you back, right? So I think we're getting closer to that because Trent has a loaded roster with all of his guys. Doug has everything that he wants. He's on his second defensive coordinator. This is the year, 2024 is the years of the Jaguars telling the truth. And it's going to be easier. You are at the doctor's office, man, and they're running EKJs. You are going to know whether you're good enough, whether you're good enough this year. And if you don't know whether you're good enough this year, or if you, or if you find out you're not good enough this year, there are enough things attached to this franchise and enough there's been enough going on that you can now identify. You're taking an MRI. You're going to know exactly what the problem is. It's going to be this year. You're going to find out. I hope you don't have a problem. What I think about, and this is what I want to discuss tomorrow, are the Jaguars in a dangerous territory of being an 11 and 16 forever? 
and to think that that might be something bad to say. 11 and 6 for the next eight years, you know what that might represent? It might represent you being good enough to be in the dance, but not good enough. You might be what the Tennessee Titans have been for the last decade. You might be, if they've been in the playoffs that much, somebody has, but you might be one of those teams. You might be what the Buffalo Bills been for the last six years. Now, if you look retrospectively, Jaguar fans will take that because they've been so bad. That means they've been close, right? But how does it feel to get close knowing you could have actually done it, but you can't because you got somebody else? So we'll hit that tomorrow. Are they headed for what I call pretty mediocrity? Beautiful mediocrity. Are the Jaguars headed for that? We'll discuss that tomorrow here on Locked On Jaguars. Make sure you tap in to Locked On Sports Today. Uh, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 uh, streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, man, you guys take care tomorrow. We'll talk about pretty mediocrity tomorrow and see if that's something that's a reality in your future. Till then, y'all take care. We'll see you tomorrow on Locked On Jaguar.